There is something strange in a crypt near town. Who are you gonna call? Crypt Hunters. Crypt Hunters is a two-player game set in the world of Warhammer. I don't play the main game, but I played and enjoyed several of the standalone games set in the same world that came out in the last couple of years, and Crypt Hunters is precisely one such game. Two player, one player will control the heroes and one player will control the ghosts. Uh, now, there are loftier names in the game for these two parties, but uh, as somebody who doesn't play Warhammer, those names like the Storm Eternals or something like that, uh, they just sound a little silly, so I prefer to call them the heroes and the ghosts. The hero player is exploring the crypt, which is modular and is built, but then also unbuilt during gameplay, you will see what that means. Uh, as the hero player you are trying to survive and then to find this style, which will be part of the tile stack. You find this tile, when you get it, you, you, when you move on to that tile, you also gain this token. After you have that token, you need to move on to this tile, which is at the bottom of the stack. I assume that indicates the exit, and so if the, is the hero player you're able to do that, find the winch and reach that tile, you win the game. As the ghost, your only job is to eliminate the, the heroes. If all four heroes are killed, then you win the game. The game comes with very cool looking miniatures that are easy to assemble. It is true, they are not just saying. Uh, they do not require glue. I build them by myself and I'm not a big miniature person. And so the fact that I was able to build them and they're holding together without glue is glue is a testament to the fact that they are easy to build. So that's for the heroes and the ghosts, a little more delicate. I really like the fact that they do look like ghosts because they do look like raggedy clothes with nothing in it but a skull, a chain and some skeleton hands. This is the Dread Warden, Warden is the big boss, so you can put it on the board only and there already is a number of other ghosts on the board and the ghost player gets extra actions, an extra action per turn when that guy is on the board. You place the starting tile there, you place the four heroes on that starting tile at the beginning of the game during setup. Then you draw tiles on the stack until the heroes on that tile do not have a line of sight to any open edge. So for example, that's why after I place that tile, that tile there, the heroes would have a line of sight to that, an open edge, they don't like that. And so we draw another tile. As you draw tiles, as the ghost player places the tile, you have to put it in such a way that you do not create dead alleys unless you have to. So at setup, there will be a net of corridors of hallways coming out of the starting tile with no open, uh, open edge inside, however. What happens? Each turn starts with the with new tiles being added in case one of the heroes does have a line of sight to an open to an open edge. So that would not be the case turn one because you did that during setup. But if this is the situation at the beginning of a round, then you do need to address that. Then the ghost player will place a tile there, which happens to be one that does require more tiles until there is no line of sight available and that would work and then we go there and we're gonna place at least two because that is the case and then oh but we can be more than two again and again and again there we go that works so at the beginning of each turn, new tiles may be added depending on open edges that have line of sight to. Next, uh, the hero player gets to activate. The heroes can activate in any order. They can attack twice or move twice or move and attack or attack and move in either order. When you move, you move up to your full movement allowance, which is not much for the humans. It is always a move of one. They only have this modified pet here that can move up to two. 
And since you're here, each hero also has, uh, uh, well, some heroes have unique abilities. And then also they have different attack, a number of attack dice that they roll when attacking and different number of ones. So when they take enough ones to match or exceed their, their value indicated on the card, then that hero is eliminated. And remember, as the ghost, you want to eliminate all four. And that's how you win the game. So, heroes move and or attack when they are attacking. Suppose that this is the situation. Then the hero chooses, and that hero is activating, for example, the hero chooses a tile that they have line of sight to, and they shoot there. Again, they roll the corresponding number of attack dice. For this hero, that would be two. And for each lightning bolt that they roll, they eliminate one of the ghosts. And each, these dice have uh, one, two, three lightning bolts, two skulls, so those are the hits for the ghosts, and one blank side. So that's it, that's for the heroes. So move and attack, attack and move, so pew, 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 it's easy enough. Then it's time for the uh, ghost player to uh, reconcile the board. As I said, the board is built, but also unbuilt during gameplay. If there is an area that the heroes do not have line of sight to, nor would they be able to have line of sight to if they move by one, then that area is removed. For example, right here, uh, well, if these heroes move by one, they would have line of sight to all of those things. This hero has line of sight there, and this hero also has line of sight well there and would have line of sight here if this hero was here but if this hero is here even by moving by one would not have line of sight no one else would have line of sight to that tile even if moving by one and so this tile is removed and so actually if now actually the heroes moved all in this direction uh, as you can see all of these tiles would be removed. So picking in a direction, seeing a long hallways and then running the other way may be useful to, um, to remove some of these tiles. After tiles that do not have immediate or near line of sight are removed, the ghost gets reinforcements. Reinforcements arrive from uh, all open edges, like that would be like in this case there, from all open edges, one is here. Unless there is a hero right there, then that is pretty badass and the ghosts are too scared. So once the ghosts have entered from all open edges, the ghost player gets three actions. Usually, unless the Dread Warden is in place, then they get four actions. For an action, you can move a ghost. Uh, for example, from here to here. For an action, you can drift with a ghost, which is pretty cool. It means that as you move, you pick up all of the other ghosts that you encounter on the way, and you can move any number of spaces in a straight line. For an action, the ghost player can choose a hex that has ghosts and attack an adjacent hex, in which case you simply roll a die for each ghost in the attacking hex, and each skull that is rolled is uh, one on the target. Those are the main uh, the main ideas. Something important, uh, very important, is that as we were removing uh, tiles here, if by removing tiles you split the crypt into multiple areas that are uh, separated from one another, then you get to, to choose which battlefield remains and which one is completely removed. Some people were so lost, so deep in the crypt that they have no way of rejoining the main action. All the miniatures from the section that was removed are removed from the game, which is no big deal for the ghosts. They keep coming back, but it's a big deal if one of the heroes gets lost in uh, such an area, is removed together with part of the board, and then the hero is also removed from the game. Continue like this until, as the hero, you collected this token here and you reach the last hex, the last style on the, of the stack. Then you win the game, or continue like this as the ghost player until you have eliminated all of these pesky heroes, and in that case, you, the ghost player, 
win the game. Crypt is a game that I like enough. I like it, I don't love it. Um, I like it enough, you know, middle of the way, a little more on liking than disliking, but not that far from the middle of the road. Uh, I expected something different, and maybe there is that element of disappointment. I expected frantic, furious, over the top combat, blowing stuff up, etc., etc., etc. Little did I realize that you have really little control on combat because it's completely random, is as luck based. You have some cards at the beginning. You receive some cards. You can play them to modify things, but. They don't. You don't get to replenish them. So once those special effects are gone, they're gone. There are a couple of other things you can do, but ultimately you're rolling those dice, and it's a huge random element there. What you have most control over is uh, how you place the tiles, how you manipulate the board, when you open certain things, when you uh, create a situation in which certain tiles will be removed. As the human player, you want to. You want to go through the deck as fast as possible, try to get a lot of tiles out, try to sit on the edges when it makes sense uh, so that you don't get reinforcements from those edges. You're going to try to split out and spread out as much as possible because horror movies told that that's always the best thing to do. This way you cover more ground. In Sentai, that is the case. You want to cover a lot of ground here. But of course, not to the point of then splitting the, the dungeon and then losing some of your people. So actually, this is really not a game of combat that happens on a modular board, say like in Dungeons & Dragons uh, board games like Wrath of the Shardalong, Castle Ravenloft, Legends of Drizzt, and so many other games of that ilk. It really is a game of tile placement with some massively random combat thrown in. On one hand, it can be pretty exciting. Wow, I haven't seen these two things together. On the other hand, maybe there is a reason. Sometimes you eat a dish, it's like, wow, they put these two ingredients together and there was a reason why no one ever did that before. I don't think that those two elements really go together all that well. Frankly, to me, this game, despite the miniatures and the combat and the killing, etc., etc., is much closer to Carcassonne than to almost any other game that I can think of. Uh, to me, this is like Cryptazon or Killazon. It really is about manipulating those styles and then getting disappointed because you did all of your planning and manipulating and then the opponent rolls a lot of dice, say you're the human player, the opponent kills one of your of your people early on, and there isn't really much that you can do. Again, I guess the sense is there should be the sense of mounting dread as the human player gets reduced. After all, it, even if just one character, even just the modified pet reaches the last tile, that's enough. But in truth, if you lose somebody early on, then just in a try, I haven't really seen that is realistic for you to expect uh, to make it. Again, you may have that arc in which uh, people get wounded, and you, but meanwhile the game progresses, and as people start leaving the board, you're close enough that the survivors can go for the final push. But again. Huge luck there that may uh, throw the, uh, the, the, the really the, the meaning of laying tiles in a specific way out of the window. It may totally deprive you of any meaning and sense. And that just, just doesn't work for me. Uh, the, I want to play Carcassonne. I like the, the coldness, the, the, the calculating element that you have, with a little bit of randomness, of course, when you draw tiles, but not then to the point that you have the randomness of the tile draw and the randomness of the combat based, dice based combat, without really a lot that you can do to increase your odds, without really a sense of, of tactical battle. It's Carcassonne, it's Killazon, it's Cryptazon with a lot of randomness thrown in. And again, those two elements to me just don't work very well together. I had to praise the originality of somebody that thought, let's have a different game. Uh, maybe it just be a little too different for me. So it's just a hybrid game that doesn't really satisfy me enough as a combat game because there isn't enough flavor depth in that combat to 
make maneuvering and positioning and using weapons and tactics really rewarding. There is too much randomness for the game to be a nice tile placing game, I don't know, like between two CDs or Carcassonne, etc. 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 So Crape Hunters, Crape Tazon, Killazon doesn't work very well for me. Uh, feels weird, it's hybrid, it's two halves that I feel they weaken each other, they are not, when you put together two things you like the total to be more than the sum of the parts, Crypt Hunters to me is somewhat less than the sum of the parts.